Chris Bethia is here to discuss her techniques on protection for empaths. You know, for you that don't know about this, uh, an empath are, is a highly sensitive person, often a psychic person, and this person can usually feel another person's emotions. And an, an intuitive empath um, usually feels, but doesn't actually hear emotions, right? So they can have another intuitive gift on top of that, of that as well. Chris Bethia is a facilitator and empath caregiver at the Empath Support Group on Facebook, and she is here to discuss the techniques she's gleaned through her work with her 5,000 plus, almost actually 6,000 strong empath support group. Welcome. She is going to be working on us with shielding and her personal empathic protection and grounding techniques. If you are the highly sensitive, highly emotional, if you've ever been called neurotic, this is the show for you. These techniques will help you cope with the influx of other people's emotional states. And uh, hello, welcome, Chris. Uh, Chris, are you here with us tonight? I am, Carmen. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for making the time to be with us and to talk openly about your group and your beliefs. Wonderful. Sorry about I'm the just, Skype problems. <laughs> are you having okay? We are usually very understanding of that, and we work around that all the time. Thank you, Chris. And uh, let me start with a little bit of an introduction about Chris, Chris's background. Uh, we wanted to clarify that she had actually a background not in the military, but that her husband was in the military and that she has traveled extensively across the world. You stayed mainly in Europe, is that correct too, uh, Chris? Yes, I, I was in Europe for three years and um, was stationed in Germany and spent a lot of time traveling France and Liechtenstein, and um, I've been to London and just all over the place. Phenomenal, which is making you <laughs> multicultural for our program, which is really nice. Yeah. Thank you. You also are a programmer, uh, so you are very, and you're trained in programming and coding, so you're a very analytical type personality. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You have a Facebook group, but you're also um, basically moderating um, a large sample of the empath, empath population. Tell us a bit about that experience. Um, well, it, it started when a friend of mine, we were talking about being an empath, and we discovered the word, basically, and... We're like, well, if there's other people like us out there, and I'm sure there are, then they're going to want to learn more because, I mean, we're, we're all learning the word and learning that we can feel other people and, and sometimes that just makes us feel so alone and so different and, and we decided that it would be a great idea to actually provide a support group where we can talk about what we're going through so we can learn how to protect ourselves so that we can actually participate in the world and not have to shun ourselves away because of being just overwhelmed by the feelings of everybody around us. So we, we wanted to start helping other people that were like us and, and it just, it really took off. <laughs> I know we wonder, I wonder where you guys were all my life, you know? <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> the internet really has helped. I mean, I, I really don't think that any of this would have been possible without the internet because you don't just sit down and talk to somebody, hey, are you an empath? I mean, it's just not something you do. But when, once you realize that there are, there's a definition for it, there are other people that are going through it, and that there are ways to to learn to protect yourself from it, then it, it's just wonderful. But when we were young, there was nothing like that. And we just had to just kind of roll with it and, and kind of keep to ourselves and become basically introverts. And it was, I mean, for some people, it's really scary and and just not, not very fun at all to actually be going through, okay, why am I feeling this way? There's nothing in my life to be sad about, but I'm just sitting here bawling my eyes out while there's somebody like in the other room or, or if you're in a coffee shop or something, somebody else is really sad and you're just picking up on it and 
that's when you need to learn, okay, where is that emotion coming from? Is that if I'm not sad, there's, it's got to be coming from someplace else. And finally, I was just able to make that connection. Well, somebody in here is sad. And then it just sort of like, it was just like, wow, okay. <laughs> and then to find out that there's a word for it, and it wasn't just me, it was just, it was so wonderful to be able to not be alone anymore. I do agree because, and I want to say that's a very nice, beautiful description of how I like to work is to isolate what my groups of friends are like, if they are emotionally healthy, how they're affecting you. And also, it's true, they're, to find actually a group of people you can relate to is amazing. It really is. So what happens to you when you do not shield? What happens to you? Do you get physically ill or do you get anxious? Have you noticed? It's, I mean, it's been so long. I've learned how to shield and it's just, it's just automatic now. I can, I can pick people from the crowd if I want to pick up their emotions and I can just shut it off. I mean, when I was a child, it would be, it would be tears, it would be happy, it would be sad, it would be stress. And even as a teenager, oh, teenagers with all the emotions and all the hormones, it was just terrifying. It's like, what in the world's going on? But then I had my book. I was a, I was a nerd. I was a geek. You know, I sat there and I read my book and I didn't participate in a lot of things. And I just kind of secluded myself. But I was able to kind of use books as my shield to, to kind of get away from it all. I mean, I can lose myself in a book. And there's nothing else out there. And I think it was because of reading books that I was able to kind of figure out, okay, this emotion's not mine. It's coming from someplace else. And and then once I got the hang of that, I was able to just kind of protect myself and just put the shields up. Um, for a long time, for me, it was a wall. It was It wasn't just shields, and I just put a wall up against everybody. And that was, that, that, I mean, I'm so against that because you can basically just, you can hurt yourself. You don't, you can't be emotionally balanced. You can't participate in the world. You don't have any idea what's going on with anybody. It's like everything is just cut off from you. So I, I don't like the wall thing. I like a shield where you can discern people. Okay, I want to, I want to communicate with this one. I want to interact. I want to help this person. And then, and then you let that person in and you have a good energy exchange going on and then you can, you can figure out and reach them and they can reach you and it's all good. But when you have that wall, you really, you really ruin any chances of having a true relationship, a true friendship. You just lose so much of what we are put on this earth to do that it's just, it just feels wrong now which is why I'm so glad that I can have this support group where I can say, okay, you don't want to turn it off. This is a gift. This is something that will allow you to help others. Well, once you learn how to protect yourself, and that's the very first and most important thing to do is to protect yourself, but once you get that ability to, tr to allow certain things in at a time, then you're able to help the people and still keep yourself, you know, in a safe place. That's true. I mean, and I think that the internet is a fairly safe space to start that. But I'm wondering, as an empath, for me, uh, it's often even more intense, don't you find? The, um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. <laughs> when you're in the internet, it's a fairly safe space. But I find that the emotions become even more intensified. Is that the same for you? Oh yeah. From the other um, people reading I've, other people I've than in real life. People from, I've I've blocked people from my wall. Um, I've unfriended people. It, if there if there's just too much drama, I can pick it up even more because by reading it, I feel like I'm almost letting it in. So when I read it, when I see those pictures of those poor puppy dogs that are being abused, it's like okay. I don't want to see this. I am totally going to, you know, in my area, if I see anybody, I'll report it. 
but I don't need to see those images because that pain is instantaneous. And that person, if they get one chance, but if they share that stuff anymore, it's like, I can't deal with that. Okay, you're gone. If they're a real life friend, I just block them from my wall. If they're just a Facebook friend, then it's like, okay, how important are you? And do I really need your drama in my life? Because I'm already helping the animals in my local area. I'm already helping the people in my local area. I can't save the world. I do think empaths can save little corners of the world, but I think that they need to um, stick to their own little areas and not worry about something that they can't do anything about, which is really difficult for so many empaths. Now, I think that's a wonderful point that as a, a moderator for such a large group of people, <clears throat> you would have had to have come across some really difficult personalities. And uh, I was having discussion with someone last night also in the empath community about uh, there being different types of empaths, some perhaps not being so nice. The word associated usually with peace, compassion, and understanding is not always the case. I mean, of course, we have feelings, and that's where you're talking about shielding. Because it's right. a breathable, flexible place. Yes. People can um, improve. Oh, yes. People can. Um, I really think that everybody is born with the ability to be an empath. I think that a lot of times childhood and, well, like me, you just put up that wall and you don't let anything in. Or you get so much and you don't know what's going on, you just, you're, you're basically fried. So, um I just, I think that just everybody can be it, can actually be an empath, which is different than having empathy. Um, I want to point out that an empath actually feels other people's emotions as their own emotions, whereas having empathy for someone is like walking in their shoes. You can get empathy from a book. You can get empathy just from day-to-day -day things, imagining what it's like to be with in somebody's shoes and going through that or having experienced it yourself, that's different than actually feeling somebody else's emotions as your own, which is which is what you need to learn to shield against so that you can discern your own emotions from anybody else's. Well, that's very true because I know that they've done studies on people with uh, sociopathic or psych uh, psychopathic traits, and a lot of them are very good mimics of compassion. And uh, th yeah. that would be one of the things that I think we see a lot of is people that are able to really, you know, walk, not able to necessarily walk the walk. They can talk the talk. And uh, that always gets me because I am I would imagine that, uh, you know, as an empath, I'm, I'm probably type A, pretty caring, uh, mm -hmm. pretty impressionable. And I haven't got the defenses or the the skills that you have. Uh, because I've been offline for a number of years for different reasons. But I think that you're correct. I think that your theory on, um, I believe that uh, psychologists do this as well for people with phobias, is that if you have a fear of people and if you're, uh, say, afraid of auras or you're feeling too much input from your environment, uh, to some extent, it is about acclimatizing to that and being able to put yourself as much as possible in in that position to a point of, you know, not a point of failure. But I think it's a really important lesson for all of us. If you're afraid of walking across a bridge, just every day take a step in that direction. Exactly. It's and and then of course. There's the people that have taken it and twisted it into something that is unpleasant and and they become people that can manipulate the emotions because it's an exchange of energy. So you've got the empaths that feel everything and then you've got the empaths that project everything and empaths can do that naturally. And it's my goal in life and, and I do it on a daily basis. I project love. I project happiness, I smile at people, and I think that just those little things really make a difference. But at the same time, there's those people out there that just take, and they, they send out that negative because they eat that make well. They, they thrive on that negative, and that negative energy is, is I mean, sometimes you call them the, the psychic vampires, sometimes you just call them 
I don't know, just negative people, and they, and they never smile, and then they, they kind of push it off onto you, and, and an empath can pick up on that, and that's, that's when shielding becomes so very important, is because you've got to recognize the people that are unable to, that, that are, are not being, that are being just too negative, and just and pull it back into, pull into yourself, so that you only have your own emotions and you can say, okay, no, I don't need your negativity. I need you to stop. And and sometimes if it's people that's in your lives on a daily basis, sometimes you have to somehow get away from them. And you need a safe place and you need to, to have your shields up. Shielding is so important for the, the gift of empath because it's just... It's the way you, you stay sane and protected and able to, you know, make a difference. So, Chris, what is a negative emotion? Is that anxiety, anger, um, sort of a manic joy, energy, or uh, depression? Does it depend on your mood? Well, you know, what, negative emotions to me are the emotions that that make you feel bad. It would be like depression. It would be anger. It would be frustration. It would be stress. So all those things are things that kind of lower our vibrational levels. And as as uh, spiritual beings having a human experience, we want to have the higher vibrational level. And and those are the happy, the joy, the excitement, just the thrill of being alive, that simple smile, that baby's giggle, all those wonderful things just just raise our vibrational levels. And they are, I mean, it's just such a huge difference between when you're feeling down, and they say the word feeling down is what is negative, and it's always been slang. You know, you feel down, you feel bad. When you feel good, you feel up, you feel high, you're, you're just, in a different vibrational level. And so how do you deal the, with these people? Uh, you know, I had a comment on my blog the other day. Good grief. They said to me, how could you write about empaths being peaceful or not? Why don't, why don't you write about some killer headlines? And you're so vanilla. And there's almost like I was like really laughing because, well, that's the point. The point is like I enjoy being good. I mean, I enjoy the pleasure I get out of altruism. And it really is not put on. So how do you deal right. with those folks in your group? I mean, this is a, a deeply cultural issue. You know, people want to hate and they want to put you down for doing what you consider the right thing, which makes you feel good. You're not doing it to change necessarily their point of view. Does This, this makes you feel better. Isn't that correct? Yes, it is. It's, it's, but the, I, also, I, I can, I feel good when other people feel good and, I mean, it's just it's just a wonderful experience to go through that cashier's line and smile and say something just uplifting to the cashier who was down before, and then all of a sudden they smile at you, and their day is better. And and then I, I believe in the pay it forward. I think that they will make the next person feel better, and it will just continue doing that, and we can make such a huge difference. I don't understand why people would want the negative. I don't understand why people would say, well, why smile all the time? Why be positive all the time? Why see the bright side of everything? Why be just just so happy all the time? I mean, and it's like, well, because it feels good. I mean, how could anybody not know how good it feels to feel good? <laughs> I know that kind of sounded redundant, but it's it's how how do they not? I mean, you're healthier, you're happier, you have so many wonderful, uplifting moments when you just smile at somebody or wave at somebody, and and to think that people out there are like, why? Why do you want to do that? It's like, well, try it. You might like it, and then it, you never really know what happens but I mean if it's somebody you know on a daily basis it's like it really makes a difference and of course there's always the law of attraction too I mean there's so many benefits to being uplifting and to to making that little bit of difference in a life that I don't see any reason why anybody wouldn't want to it's just incomprehensible to me 
I, I don't get it either. I would say the only comment I have is that I've probably noticed in my studies on, uh, you know, internet and, and propaganda is that people just don't like being told or what to do. They're probably inherently pretty, pretty smiley and friendly themselves. But the moment they have to be told, you know, that they are part of a group, I think they're probably not group uh, or team players. I don't, or they're of a different team and they're probably antagonists. Um, a portion of those people are probably going through grief and um, are angry, yet I imagine that, And but I agree with you that uh, there's something to be said about at least having a sense of humor, even during the worst of times, and um, that's what's gotten me through. And, uh, you know, I think that if you live uh, in a city, right, you have to really maintain that. Otherwise, people just forget. It is a chain reaction. To look somebody in the eye and to smile at them, it will affect, if you do it to one person, I'm sure the next 100 people they see. Guaranteed. Definitely. And it Tell feels me good some, to be, are you a, to be one of those What sign are you? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, of what sign are you? <laughs> I'm sorry? What sign are you? What star oh, sign? I'm a Taurus, but I have a Gemini moon and my Gemini is is sometimes pretty strong in, in me, and I have a lot of Gemini tendencies. I'm also a, I'm basically a cusp. My birthday is April 21st, so I've got a little bit of Aries there, too. So I've got, you know, <laughs> just about, just a little bit of everything. And if you go even deeper, I've got probably, I've got all four signs. Maybe not necessarily a balance, because I definitely have a lot of fire, but <laughs> i got a lot of water and, and, of course, my Taurus is my Earth, so I've got my grounding right there. Tell us about grounding. Tell us about the difference between shielding and grounding, please. Um, grounding, to me, is where you connect to Mother Earth. You, you're, it, you reach out through your, your root chakra or your feet, and you connect with Mother Earth. And, and Mother Earth can handle everything. I mean, if you need to be a rock, you be that rock, you connect to Mother Earth, and you have that protection right there because Mother Earth just is, you know, she's solid. She's there, and she can handle everything. Um, shielding is, to me, is a, a, um, a means of protecting yourself from... It's like wearing armor. You can protect yourself from too much energies, too much negative, too much, well, I don't believe there's too much positive, but some people get overwhelmed even when there's too much positive. But the shielding will actually, um, you can discern different things and allow some in and take it off when you want to, like a, like a suit of armor. It's just something that is completely under your control and it's a way to still be still be protected in the world. But I mean sometimes you need to ground and and actually be fully protected, like sleeping or during certain times and then there's other times when you, you're just shielding and you're okay, I'm I'm talking to this person but I don't need all these other emotions, just concentrate on this person. At least that's what it means to me. I'm not s I mean there's been a lot of different definitions for grounding and shielding, so this so what do you do? What they mean to me? I'm sorry. What do you What do you do when you want to ground? Could you tell us a sort of a step by step process, please? I'd be very interested. We all would. Um. Well, when I ground, I I, I mean, if it's a if it's a good grounding, I I like to just feel the earth. I like to touch the ground. I like to touch a tree. Take off my shoes and be barefoot. I like that, just that touch, the touch to Mother Earth. Um, and then I can also visualize my root chakra connecting to Mother Earth. I like to, um, I also like to do like the tree of life where my root chakra is the roots going into Mother Earth and then my crown chakra is the branches going up into the universe. And then I feel like I'm kind of connected to everything, which... We are all connected, so that, that just kind of fulfills that 
that feeling of oneness with everything. Um, <clears throat> shielding, shielding is the, the the more important, I think, for me. Um, one of my favorite shielding, shielding methods is the um, like a waterfall falling down over my head. And it pushes away the, the negative emotions, and I mean, it always you can always allow in the, the good emotions, but if if you want them all, I mean, you you control it, so you have that waterfall going running down over your head, going into Mother Earth, taking all the bad stuff, taking everything that's not yours with you, and just dropping in, into Mother Earth, and she can change it into you know positive energies and healing and everything else. So I, I just I just give it to her. Um, one of my favorite ones for my son, who is also an empath, is a snow globe. And I have, I, at a young age, I had him imagine a snow globe around him. And then, of course, you know, you have the little snowflakes twinkling here and there. And it would reflect all the negative emotions. It would let in the good stuff. And, and after a while, it got to, became automatic for him. And even now, my waterfall or any other visualization for for shielding is just has become automatic, and it's it's just off or on basically. Okay, I'm I'm concentrating here. I'm concentrating here. I'm blocking here. I've got to concentrate. This website's due in five hours. I got to get this done. Okay, the outside world is now gone. <laughs> that sort of thing. But That's can, so cool! You're going to teaching your kids. How are they responding to this? Oh, he's great. He is now a teenager. He's 13, and he he can still pick up emotions that he says. And I've talked to him because of various things and discussions in the empath support group. I've talked to him about okay, how do you do it now? He's like, it's just automatic, mom. But he is so good with children. I get compliments on how understanding he is and how helpful he is and how he really cares about people and how he's just just a really strong and has really great understanding for children and his peers and even young adults. I mean, it's just, I am so proud of him. He has, he has really come into himself and he can really utilize his gift to help people, and he, he's really going to, I really think he's going to make a difference. Of course, proud mom bragging here, you know, all moms are going to say that. No, but, this is a topic yeah. in itself. And does he talk to his, his friends about this at all, or does he keep it to himself? I don't think it really comes up. Um, I don't, I mean, empaths, I think they they have, the way the empaths work is there's one in a community or one in an area. I mean, he might have a couple friends that are empaths, and I think I have some suspicions, but especially for a boy, it's not something you like say, hey, are you an empath? You know, that sort of thing. So um, it's it's possible that there, he has friends that are empaths, but he has a very tight group of friends, and they all really understand each other. They all care about each other, and there's just a lot of love there, so... I don't know if he's the glue that holds them together, but I think he has a lot of fun and just enjoys. He's he's very he's very much an extrovert with his friends, but he becomes an introvert when he's you know in new situations. But eventually, he even comes out and you know gets a grasp on everything and can handle things. So it's it's we're so lucky to have such a a strong group of people that are discovering their empath gifts now and they have children who they are able to teach how to protect themselves. Our children are going to be so strong with their gifts that they're going to really be making a difference and it's just so exciting to see what's going to happen with, with our next generation. I mean, there's people that say that they're scared about the, the upcoming generations, but I really think that it's going to make a difference. So I, I, I really agree with you, and that's the idea, and I really hope that that does uh, supplant some of the uh, electro pollution uh, that we have by our devices and the artificiality uh, in the uh, media uh, that we're now uh, bombarded with lately. 
So I'm just going to quickly put us into a quick commercial. And uh, one moment, we're going to be right back. A new era in psychic services has begun. PsychicAccess.com You can connect with our psychic advisors by telephone or chat 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All of our psychic advisors are interviewed, fully verified and accuracy tested, assuring you quality service. We're living in some very troubled times right now. More and more, the world's problems are affecting us on a personal level. You don't have to deal with this alone. Our highly accurate psychics, caring advisors and talented mediums can help with situations you are currently experiencing and can let you know what the future may hold for you. All new customers get a free six-minute reading. All you have to do is register. Why not visit us now and get a free reading at PsychicAccess.com. Wonderful. Hey, we're back. So here we are with Chris Bethia. She's discussing with us techniques about empath, uh, being an empath, a psychic empath, or just your regular everyday empath. Welcome back, Chris. And we were talking about the world and what waits our children or the ones that don't have kids, the kids, and our future uh, care providers, programmers, and uh pilots of this world, how do we deal with all of this grief and trauma? And uh, it's just so wonderful to see that mothers are embracing this. Tell us about how people are in the area that you live in. You say you live in the uh, Kansas area. How are you finding uh, this is being received? Do you uh, espouse this or go to any community meetings? Um, I haven't started any community meetings um, locally, I will be teaching a class at a festival later this spring. I'm very excited about that. Um, <clears throat> I don't. I mean, it would be it would be interesting to see what would happen to actually physically meet people. But at the same time, I'd be nervous because so many empaths would be so new that you would need a safe space in order for them to actually be able to be comfortable with each other and to make sure that there aren't any empaths that don't have good intentions. So I like I like the anonymity of the internet and the, the Facebook group because it just makes it so much easier to, you know, you 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 can have that one on one. You can look at them and you can figure out, okay, this person's okay. But if you meet with a whole group of people, it would be overwhelming. It would be like, okay, I'd have to, as, as, a, as a founder, I would have to be, meet each one individually and say, okay, you're fine, you're fine. And then, and then of course, that would just be so nerve-wracking for me because it would be like, okay, I have to protect these people. I know these are empaths. They are good people. They are new to being empaths, and they can't necessarily protect themselves. And I'd be just terrified of, of messing up or, or letting somebody come in that was that wasn't didn't have good intentions and would be just all worried about the the semantics of, of having a group of unknown people come together to just meet. So I mean it's a good idea, but at the same time it's a frightening idea. The, the class that I'll be teaching um, this spring will be in a safe area. It'll be a group of people that are already together and already know each other somewhat, and it's like a, a, a big community. So that would make me much more comfortable than having a meetup like at a coffee shop here in town or even at somebody's house because you don't know what kind of people you're going to get on a one-to-one basis. Yeah, that's always be, the most yeah. overwhelming. And how do you deal with hurt, Chris? How do you deal with being hurt by these people? Most of us want to know. Yeah, it's 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 very difficult. Um, I am ever the optimist. It, it annoys the heck out of some people, but I, I always see the good in people. And I think this is part of my gift is 
nine times out of ten, the people try to live up to my expectations. What some people, what, when some people are with and meet people that aren't, you know, what they say they are, sometimes that expectation is, you know, they get hurt. And I won't say I've never been hurt, and and I've definitely had my experience with people that, you know, you just can't help. But at the same time, I go out and I have the high expectations. Okay, this time's going to be different. You're going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. But when you get to that point after maybe you give them two chances, and it's like, okay, you've had two chances. You continue to hurt me. I'm not going to allow you to do that anymore. I, I love myself too much. I am too important. I can't allow you to do this to me any longer. You have to get out of my life. That's, that's all there is to it. And I have to do that one thing that's so, impo- that's so hard for empaths to do. It's like, okay, stop. Stop. I can't handle your negativity. I can't handle your your depression. I can't handle your sadness. You have to try because you you can fix yourself. You can you can do something to improve yourself. But if you choose not to, and I can't help you, and I can't be spending my energy on somebody who really doesn't want to be helped, like okay, come back to me, to me when you're ready to be helped because I'll always be here for you. But until you are ready to to take control of your life and to stop finding the negative and everything, to stop having all that drama, until you get to that point where you're ready to do that work, then I can't help you. If I can't help you, I can't spend my energy on you. So, so take it elsewhere, and I'll be here when you're ready. But until then, you have to just be a strong empath, and it hurts so much to say, I can't help you until you can help yourself. And it's just, it's it's devastating. And you just, but you have to do it because you have to protect yourself because you can't help this person over here, little Sally Jo over in the corner. She's ready to be helped. But if you're spending all your time on on Freddie, you you just, you don't have the energy for Sally Jo. So it's like, okay, I want to help Sally Jo because she's ready to be helped. She's ready to learn how to protect herself and to use her gift and to be happy. So I I can't be everything to everybody. I want to be what I can to people who are ready to be strong and to love themselves and to to actually make a difference and to let go of the to let go of the drama and the negativity. And I think importantly, don't you think that when you say, uh, may I just point out, uh, the misconception is, you know, that you have to love yourself, you know, uh, and that most people would think, well, that would mean that me and my Ten Commandments or me and my value judgment or what my parents taught me, and that makes me a good person. But yet, doesn't loving oneself also mean warts and all, negativity and all, depression and all, and then you're ready to be helped. What is yes. the perfect self? Um, it is, I mean, one of the things that I try, that I start off with people is like, you need to be able to look in the mirror and say, I love you. And be able to mean it. I mean, you have to accept the good and the bad. You, you're going to have times of depression, you're going to have times of anger, you're going to have times of sadness. It's, you're human. We are a spiritual being having a human experience. And and you're going to have all these emotions because you're wanting to have these emotions. You're wanting to have a human experience, and that means all of the emotions. But you have to love yourself. You have to love your soul. You have to love these emotions. You have to love the trials and the joys and the rewards and everything that you go through. So you can look in the mirror and say, okay, you're sad today, but I still love you. You might not be sad tomorrow. You won't be sad tomorrow. You should think positive. You won't be sad tomorrow, but you can be sad today, and I still love you. Okay, you can be angry today. It's okay to be angry. I still love you. You, you And how would you, you describe that love? Because it. I would imagine it's not like the, oh, I'm so hot kind of love. It's more like a deferral, like a, 
I can accept myself. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. It's it's like just just simple love, um, like parent to child love. It's it's yourself to yourself love. It's just a simple. I mean, it's just energy. Love is energy. So you're you're just sharing that energy with yourself. You're looking in the mirror and saying, "I love you." And and one of the shows I like to have people watch is What the Bleep, and it's it's yeah. such a, a good movie where it talks about how your how you talk to yourself, how you feel, is reflected back onto yourself, and it's it's um, just the energy and the emotions. And if you're hard on yourself all the time, then you don't ever get any better. But if you find you know just something good. And then, okay, well, this I was a little bit messed up with this today. I'm going to do better tomorrow, and and I'm just going to continue getting better. And it's it's so difficult. I understand for some people, but it you do you take it in baby steps, and you're like, okay, well, I really like my eyes. You know, I love my eyes. And then you just kind of grow into it as you can. But your ultimate goal is like looking in the mirror and say, I love you, and mean it to yourself. And it just, it changes everything because, I mean, you see and it, it lifts that vibrational level again and and you can go out and help people because if you try to help people when you're not in a good place yourself, you use that kind of as a, a, a blanket and you're hiding behind this blanket of, okay, I'm helping everybody else and it makes me feel good, but you still have to get around that blanket and love yourself and and accept yourself for who you are, you can't just spend all your time, okay, helping everybody else. That feel, makes you feel good, and that's great, and I don't want you to stop, but you also have to fix yourself. And and that's what I think a lot of people go wrong, is they're trying to help everybody else, and they don't ever help themselves, because sometimes they don't think they're worthy, or, or they just are too sad, or they just they just don't even know themselves enough to know that, hey... I, I love myself, too. I got to love myself, too, because I can make a difference, but I can make an even better difference when I don't have to worry about myself anymore because I love who I am. That's such an important point, and that um, for the, some people can get, have help out burnout, and I would say that a portion of that would really help uh, spur a lot of change in those areas. Um, but like you say, the sustainability and the um, being able to train yourself to uh, probably enjoy other aspects of life. I would really readily agree with you that it can be addictive. And I would really uh, say through all my experience and all my work that it's a very difficult habit to get out of. And that after you have become empathic or very receptive to other people and helping other people, it's very important to retrain back in and to focus on you. And that would be about uh, probably selecting the right groups of people in your life. Is that correct? Yes. It's it's so important to have your, your base friends that, that are not going to have the drama. I mean, okay, everybody's going to have drama once in a while, but you, you want people that are on the same level you are. I mean, you're close friends. You're going to have acquaintances, and you're going to have other people, but you want that, that close-knit group of people that are on the same vibrational level that you are, that are trying to achieve the same goals, that are trying to continue to improve themselves, to raise their own vibrations, to actually you know, make a difference, but they can come back to themselves. And that kind of little support group is just absolutely amazing in, in bolstering your own vibrational level and your own gift and your ability to go out and, and help others and then come back to a safe place and, and, you know, share it or just get hugs. Oh, my gosh, hugs are so wonderful. I have an RDA of hugs. <laughs> Yes. I like to get as many hugs as I can. But, I mean, that's another exchange of energy, and it just just makes a huge difference, just a smile, a hug, and it just you just have those friends that you can do that with and that exchange and truly have kind of a small support group. Now, um, not everybody's going to be able to do that. It's good to have, but you have to be very discerning on... Their, their vibrational levels, their 
abilities to love themselves, their own their own path that they're on. Sometimes they they come together, and then sometimes they go apart. You're you're always going to have that ebb and flow of of friends and and close knit friends and people in your life. And it's okay to what I'm seeing a lot in the uh, cultural crosstalk is that it is for the sake of uh, freedom of expression or appreciating other people's point of view that you have to listen to negative viewpoints. Whereas I have found like you that I prefer to not uh, friend people that have violent imagery or that are constantly political, constantly on a mission. Those things are the real, true, authentic you. And I think it's really important to differentiate between the idea of I in empathy and we in empathy. I don't think it's, I think it's wonderful. By the way, I wanted to tell you guys all that uh, you have to check out her group. We'll be giving out uh, the link address again later in the show. But let me tell you, it's a really nice self-made community. And uh, Chris is posting all the time, and she's often uh, uh, really monitoring, helping, and probably doing a lot of email on the side because I've heard from uh, some of the people in your group, and a lot of them are very deeply feeling people. A lot of women, uh, is that correct, or how would you say the proportion is uh, gender-wise? Definitely more women, um, but I am pleased any time that there are, there are men that are coming in because there is such strong male stereotypes that say men can't feel, men shouldn't feel. It's not manly to feel. And it's like, no, it is manly. You want to ha you want to, men need to feel. You want to have men in your lives that can feel, that allow themselves to feel. But yes, there are definitely much more females that are willing to, that are recognized as their empath as opposed to males. And occasionally I come across in my readings people saying, my boyfriend said, I can feel you. And I think that's just so beautiful when a man can do that. And there are actually some really strong uh, men out there that can admit to you a sensitivity and feeling. I'm really proud of them. And their numbers are really growing. And I would say it's almost like a new demographic. It's really, really nice. Very nice. So, it's amazing, um, and I have such high hopes for these younger generations where it is okay for guys to feel, where, where it's more accepting. I mean, there's always going to be cultural differences and areas where men still can't, aren't allowed to feel or express their feelings, but at the same time, I see that changing, and I have such high hopes that it will continue to change and that men will no longer have to be the strong, silent type, and they can be... They can touch their feminine side and they can say, okay, I feel, I feel you. And, and I just have such high hopes for the society, for the younger generation. Absolutely. And for those, I think they're becoming very sen uh, sensitized due to uh, a lot of sound. And as you can hear here, we even have a fire truck going by and stimulus <laughs> in the background. It's making us hypersensitive to other people. What recommendation would you give for somebody that is just starting grounding, just starting to feel themselves? And we Be have gentle, about four minutes left, and I wanted you to just power pack this idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> protect yourself. Look inside and see if the emotions are yours and figure out where they're coming from. Shield and ground to to kind of block out everything else and learn your own emotions. Once you learn and recognize your own emotions, you don't need, then you, you will know if you need to have your shields up. Um, just, it's, it's just recognizing your emotions from somebody else's and you find the roots of your emotions. So a lot of meditation. Stay away from the news. Um, stay away from negative people. Learn yourself in the beginning. Just learn and love yourself and accept your own emotions and follow them through. Do you, do you uh, may I ask you so personally, uh, are you, you're able to do this through just the network online? And fortunately, I mean, I think that's so fabulous about the online community is no actual in verbal, inter I mean, a personal interface with anybody. You're able to figure this all out on your own and get the support online. 
And we're going to give the group address here as well. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash capital E for empath, capital S for support, capital G for group forward slash. Just do a search on empath support group. I think that you're doing a phenomenal job. I really find your group extremely positive. Uh, I am so delighted to have had you here tonight. Such a joy to have had you on. Really looking forward to getting to know you thoroughly and all the people. And I really want to thank you and your friends for coming to this uh, program tonight. Really, Chris. So cool. <laughs> thank you. It's been a pleasure, Carmen. I really enjoyed chatting with you and, and it's been really great. Stick around for the Q&A if you want afterwards and feel free to feed any questions in and uh, we're going to be having a call in soon and Chris, thank you again. Blessings. Have a wonderful night and as you like to say, huggles. <laughs> huggles. <laughs> I love those huggles. <laughs> well, thanks again. Bye. It's been delightful. Hello. My name is Res Miranda. If you're having relationship, career, or life issues, I'm inviting you to experience what it's like to have access to professional, highly accurate psychics and spiritual advisors you can trust to care and help you. Register now to get your free six-minute reading by telephone or chat. Get answers. Get access. Psychic access. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Psychicaccess.com. And just not not very fun at all to actually be going through, okay, why am I feeling this way? There's nothing in my life to be sad about, but I'm just sitting here bawling my eyes out. While there's somebody like in the other room or, or if you're in a coffee shop or something, somebody else is really sad and you're just picking up on it. And that's when you need to learn, okay, where is that emotion coming from? Is that if I'm not sad... There's, it's got to be coming from someplace else. And finally, I was just able to make that connection. Well, somebody in here is sad. And then it just sort of like, it was just like, wow, okay. <laughs> and then to find out that there's a word for it, and it wasn't just me. It was just, it was so wonderful to be able to not be alone anymore. I do agree because, and I want to say that's a very nice, beautiful description of how I like to work is to isolate what my groups of friends are like, if they are emotionally healthy, how they're affecting you. And also, it's true, they're, to find actually a group of people you can relate to is amazing. It really is. So what happens to you when you do not shield? What happens to you? Do you get physically ill or do you get anxious? Have you noticed? It's, we're all learning the word and learning that we can feel other people and and sometimes that just makes us feel so alone and so different and, and we decided that it would be a great idea to actually provide a support group where we can talk about what we're going through so we can learn how to protect ourselves so that we can actually participate in the world and not have to shun ourselves away because of being just overwhelmed by the feelings of everybody around us. So we, we wanted to start helping other people that were like us and, and it just, it really took off. <laughs> I know we wonder, I wonder where you guys were all my life. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> the Internet really has helped. I mean, I, I really don't think that any of this would have been possible without the Internet because you don't just sit down and talk to somebody, hey, are you an empath? I mean, it's just not something you do. But when once you realize that there are there's a definition for it, there are other people that are going through it, and that there are ways to to learn to protect yourself from it, then it, it's just wonderful. But when we were young, there was nothing like that. And we just had to just kind of roll with it and, and kind of keep to ourselves and become basically introverts. And it was, I mean, for some people, it's really scary. And, uh, and we work around that all the time. Thank you, Chris. 
And uh, let me start with a little bit of an introduction about Chris, Chris's background. Uh, we wanted to clarify that she had actually a background not in the military, but that her husband was in the military and that she has traveled extensively across the world. You stayed mainly in Europe, is that correct too, uh, Chris? Yes, I, I was in Europe for three years and um, was stationed in Germany and spent a lot of time traveling France and Liechtenstein and um, I've been to London and just all over the place. Phenomenal, which is making you <laughs> multicultural for our program, which is really nice. Yes. Thank you. You also are a programmer. Uh, so you are very, and you're trained in programming and coding, so you're a very analytical type personality. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You have a Facebook group, but you're also um, basically moderating um, a large sample of the empath, empath population. Tell us a bit about that experience. Um, well, it started when a friend of mine, we were talking about being an empath, and we discovered the word basically and we're like well if there's other people like us out there and I'm sure there are then they're gonna want to learn more because I mean we're Chris Bethia is here to discuss her techniques on protection for empaths you know for you that don't know about this an empath are is a highly sensitive person often a psychic person and this person can usually feel another person's emotions and an, an intuitive empath um, usually feels, but doesn't actually hear emotions, right? So they can have another intuitive gift on top of that, of that as well. Chris Bethia is a facilitator and empath caregiver at the Empath Support Group on Facebook, and she is here to discuss the techniques she's gleaned through her work with her 5,000 plus, almost actually 6,000 strong empath support group. Welcome. She is going to be working on us with shielding, and her personal empathic protection and grounding techniques. If you are the highly sensitive, highly emotional, if you've ever been called neurotic, this is the show for you. These techniques will help you cope with the influx of other people's emotional states. And uh, hello, welcome, Chris. Uh, Chris, are you here with us tonight? I am, Carmen. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for making the time to be with us and to talk openly about your group and your beliefs. Wonderful. Sorry about I'm the just, Skype problems. <laughs> are you having okay? We are usually very understanding of that. I mean, it's been so long. I've learned how to shield and it's just it's just automatic now. I can I can pick people from the crowd if I want to pick up their emotions. And I can just shut it off. I mean, when I was a child, it would be it would be tears, it would be happy, it would be sad, it would be stress. And even as a teenager, oh, teenagers with all the emotions and all the hormones, it was just terrifying. It's like, what in the world's going on? But then I had my book. I was a I was a nerd. I was a geek. You know, I sat there and I read my book, and I didn't participate in a lot of things. And I just kind of secluded myself, but I was able to kind of use books as my shield to to kind of get away from it all. I mean, I can lose myself in a book, and there's nothing else out there. And I think it was because of reading books that I was able to kind of figure out, okay, this emotion's not mine. It's coming from someplace else. And And then once I got the hang of that, I was able to just kind of, protect myself and just put the shields up. Um, for a long time for me it was a wall. It was it wasn't just shields and I just put a wall up against everybody. And that was that that I mean, I'm so against that because you can basically just you can hurt yourself. You don't you can't be emotionally balanced. You can't participate in the world. You don't have any idea